Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a dark, unsaturated look inspired by Peter McKinnon. Now, if you're wondering who is Peter McKinnon, he owns a YouTube channel with over 5 million followers and he's also an internationally acclaimed photographer, filmmaker and YouTube creator. He's from Toronto, Canada and he uses his platform to inspire and help people pursue their passion behind the lens. In 2019, he was named Breakout YouTuber of the Year at the Shorty Awards. In 2020, he received a Streamy for Cinematographer of the Year. When we look at Peter's work, one of his most favorite photography look is the desaturated dark look. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to easily create that in Luminar Neo and then how to save it as a preset so you can use it on your future projects. So as you can see, once again, we are in Luminar Neo and we are in the catalog module. Here in the catalog module, we are looking at the sample files for this episode. And once again, quick reminder that if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of the video, follow the link there, download the files and start edit with me. Now here we are, we're going to be using this image. So let's just click on it, select it and then click on the edit on the top of your screen to bring it into the edit module. Here in the edit module, we're going to be focusing on our main toolbar where we're going to be using multiple different tools. To make it easier, let's make them favorite and bring them in our favorite section so we can quickly access them. So to create this effect, we're going to be using the develop tool. So let's move into our main toolbar, right click on the develop tool and click on add to favorite. We're also going to be using the Structure AI tool, so let's do the same. The Color tool. And then in our Creative section, we're going to be using the Match tool. So let's right click on it and click on Add to Favorites. And we're also going to use the Toning tool. So same thing, right click and click on Add to Favorite. So we're going to use a combination of five of these tools to create the dark, desaturated look. And let's start right away. The first tool we're going to be adjusting is the Develop tool. So let's click on its name and here in the light section, we're going to be creating the dark look. So how are we going to do that? With the exposure, we want to go down a little bit, but don't go too crazy. Only somewhere between minus 0.1 and minus 0.2. So 0.13 or 14 is perfect. Then with the contrast, we don't need to be that careful. Let's really push it all the way to somewhere around 50. This way we're getting the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter. Then to finish off the dark effect, we can use the shadow slider and let's bring it down somewhere around minus 30 or minus 35. So that's about it with the light. So we can close this section and then we're gonna move to the blacks and whites. In the blacks and whites, I don't wanna do anything with the whites, but again, create a little bit more darkness by bringing the blacks to somewhere around minus 10. We can close this section and that's it for the develop tool. So apply to the image by closing it and move to the next tool that is structure AI. Again, click on its name and open it. And here with the structure AI, we're going to add some clarity to the image. So what we want to do here is to really push the amount to somewhere around 20 or 25. You can keep an eye on the image to see what you like, but I think the plus 22 looks great. Again, we're going to apply this to the image by closing it and move to the next tool. The next tool is the color tool. It's here where we're going to create the unsaturated part of the look. So we're going to move to the HSL section. So simply open it. 
And here in the drop down box, we have a three options hue, saturation, and luminance. And following the name unsaturated, we're going to be using the saturation. So choose that. Now, the base for this look is that you remove everything other than the warm tones. So the oranges, yellows, and reds. Everything else really needs to be minus. So starting with the green, we can bring it all the way down to 70 and follow the same example on all the other sliders. After you're done with this, it's always a good idea to go back to the warm colors and increase their saturation. So we can go back to the red and maybe bring it up to somewhere around 15, 20, a little bit also on the orange. Again, keep an eye on the image and see what you like. So for me, somewhere around 14 and with the yellow as well, just a little bit somewhere around 10. So the idea is to pick your warm tones that are red, orange and yellow and push their saturation a little bit and then go into the cooler tones where you have your green, cyan, blue, purple and magenta and bring them all down to somewhere around 70. It doesn't have to be exact. It's more the idea behind where you're creating the unsaturated look. So you have your warm tones standing out and your cooler tones being tuned down. So that's it with the color tool. Now we can click on it to apply to the image and move to the toning tool. Let's open the tool by clicking on its name. And here in the toning tool, we're gonna add a little bit of cinematic feel to the overall look. Well, how are we gonna do this? First of all, let's increase the amount to 100. And now we can switch between adjusting the highlights and shadows. We can add a tint and color to the shadows and highlights separately. Well, let's start with the highlights. In the highlights, we wanna add a little bit of more warmth to the overall image. So how I like to do this? What I like to do is to increase the saturation all the way to 100, so I can easily choose the color. For us, we're going for the orange. So I think somewhere around 10, maybe 15, somewhere between 10 and 20 is the right color. So for us, maybe 19 looks good. Once I'm happy with the color, then I can jump back to the saturation slider and bring it down to something that I like. We want to be careful with that one. And I think something like 17 will be perfect. Now we're going to turn our switch to shadows and we're going to be adding color into the shadows. So let's increase the saturation again. And now we're going to be looking for that color, that cinematic color between green and blue. So let's use the slider and let's go up and see what we like. For me, I think somewhere around 170, 175 is looking great. Again, we're going back to our saturation slider and bring it down until we see something we like. I think that with the shadow, we can be higher than where we were with the highlights. So let's see what we like, something around here. I think it's looking good. So the using of the toning tool really help us to make sure that we don't end up only with the really bright areas and the dark areas. This will just add some color and some tone into all of these and makes it a little bit more interesting. Once we're happy with that, we can close it, apply it to the image, and really we're gonna finish it off with the matte tool. So let's again click on it, open it, and here it's very creative. It's really artistic decision of how much you wanna add to the image. So let's start by increasing the amount to somewhere around 20. Now with the matte tool, it's really good to go quite far, quite high when it's too much, and then bring it down to see what we like. Because quite often when we're starting with the zero and we just add something like five, we're not sure if it's there or not. So take the amount slider, bring it up where you overdo it, and then keep bringing it down until you see the effect you like. So I think for this image, I like something around 10, 12, maybe 15 is looking good. After that, I can jump into the fade slider and add extra portion of fade to the overall image. So I quite like what I see. We could still use sliders like contrast and see if that's gonna help us. Maybe a little bit of extra contrast is looking good here. So we can go to 30 and then also use the vividness and see when you bring it down, you really make it even more unsaturated or you can push it the other way around and let the orange stand out from the image. But for me, I'm quite happy with what we have. So simply double click on the name of the slider and that will reset it to its original value. So now that we're done with the look, we can close this tool, apply it to the image, and have a look at the before and after. For this, we need to go to the bottom of our screen where there is a little eye icon. Click on that and see the before and after. The next thing we wanna do is to create preset from this look. 
So for this, we're simply going to go into the actions, which are again on the bottom of your screen, click on it, and there is an option called Save as Preset. So click on that, and that will bring the image into the Presets module. In the Presets module, all the way on the top will be your new preset. So you need to change the name. So let's call it Desaturated Look, and just hit Enter. This way, it's going to get saved. Once we finish saving the look, we can move back into our catalog module and we can try the look on other images. So let's select this image and then click on the presets to move it there. In the presets module, make sure that you in my presets folder and there click on your desaturated look. It usually takes a few seconds and there is the result for you. I think it's looking great, very cinematic, but still let's try it on more images. Again, let's go back into the catalog module. And in the catalog module, we can select this image and again, bring it back to presets module. Here we can again, jump on our new preset, click on it and apply it to the image. Again, it's looking very cinematic and very modern. And to finish it off, I wanna show you that this look can be applied to different photography styles. So let's go back into our catalog. And in the catalog, we have this image with a young lady. Let's select it, click on presets. And again, we're going to apply our new preset to it. So let's do that. Let's just click on it. And you can see that it creates this really nice cinematic modern look. So now you have this new preset and a new look that you created yourself and you have it saved in a preset so you can use it on any projects in the future. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.